Louisville is the first ACC team in the championship. We won't flinch. But they want more. This is History for the Louisville Cardinals. On the other side of the net, the number one overall seed. We've been here before. We know what to do. We came to leave a legacy. We've already made history. Tonight, we're making more. Louisville. Texas. We have unfinished business. Can the cards claim the crown? We are not leaving without that trophy. Or will the horns hook them for a title? We are not leaving without the trophy. It all comes down to this. Excitement, anticipation, nerves. You can feel it all in Omaha tonight. It must mean it's champ day. At the end of the night, confetti will fall. We will have our national champion. It's Louisville. It's Texas. It's going to be incredible. It takes something special to get here. Just two teams remain, and they will reach for that dream and for that trophy tonight. We are honored to be with you for the championship match. Courtney Lyle, alongside ACC Player of the Year, Katie George, indoor national champion, beach Olympic bronze medalist, Holly McPeak. And Ladies, when these young women pick a school, they dream of this moment of getting to play for a national championship. You're right, all of these athletes have worked so hard to get to this point. I hope that they're present in the moment and playing their best volleyball. Jared Elliott told us pregame, I want this championship more than any other for this group because they've gone about it the right way. Danny Busboom Kelly, of course, wants it because this would make history for Louisville in a variety of ways. It's gonna mean so much to which either, whichever team wins this national title. For Texas, they were the number one overall seed. They've won a national title before, but Logan Eggleston has not, and she is the national player of the year. First time in Texas program history that a player has won national player of the year. Is that a surprise or what? But she is so deserving. She has given everything to this program the last five years, and it's evident in the way that she plays. But what was most impressive, she got up to a slow start on Thursday against San Diego, but she had the mental fortitude to pull herself out of it and respond in stunning fashion with 16 kills. She's physically tough, but more importantly, she's mentally tough. This resume is impressive for Logan Eggleston, but what may be more impressive is the person, the leader that she has become. Texas wants to win a national title, and they want to do it for Logan Eggleston. For Louisville, they're looking for their very first NCAA championship. Claire Chasse, she was playing yesterday, or on Thursday, like she wanted it. She's a first-team All-American for a reason. And she's put in the extra work. She was not a six-rotation player, but when Anna DeBeer went out with an injury, she was forced to step into that position. She has worked hard in the weight room. She's added six inches to her jump, and she is hitting with incredible range. We saw her have a huge semifinal with 25 kills, and she's been an important part of the Louisville success. You see she hit 429 against a very strong defensive team in Pitt. It was incredible to watch her. She was just an absolute machine in a five-set win over their rival Pitt. That fifth set, it was all Louisville. They won 15 to two. It was a dominant performance from the Cardinals in the fifth set, and it got them here to their first ever appearance in that national championship match. A win tonight for these programs, yeah, it would mean a ton. It would mean so much dreams coming true for both of these teams. For Louisville, it would be the first national championship for the conference. And also, Danny Busboom Kelly, if they were to win tonight, would be the first woman to win an NCAA title as a head coach. Yeah, that's amazing. We've only seen one other woman coach here in a final, and she's trying to knock down that ceiling. Texas is looking for its third NCAA title. The last came 10 years ago, back in 2012. You want to see some talent on this stage tonight? You're going to absolutely see it. All Americans left and right on both sides. Katie mentioned it in the pregame show. The best players, some of the top players in the nation, you're going to see them here. Yeah, Zoe Fleck is one of the best Libros in the country, and she patrols the backcourt for Texas. Asia O'Neill led the country in hitting percentage. And then we already talked about Claire Trasse. She has been amazing. 
It's almost time. Katie is standing by with both head coaches. Thanks, Courtney. Danny, you've played in this match. You've succeeded. What advice did you give your players tonight? I told our players to breathe in what they can control, breathe out what they can't, to go for it and soak it all in and have a great time. Jarrett, earlier this morning at practice, you told your team you're ready for this moment. Why do you believe that? Well, they've been able to look each other in the eye all year long and be loyal to one another, and they've been competing every day. So we've done all we can, and we're ready to roll. Best of luck. Thank you. What is it like for a player? It's a dream come true, but sometimes you like you are thinking so much about what you want for the outcome that you're not present. So that's what I mean when you want to be present every place so you don't let the moment get away from you. Louisville will serve first. Anna DeBeer stepping back. swing for Texas. It was dug up by Raquel Lothero. Claire Chasse into the Texas block. Another chance for Chasse to the back corner. This is a strong rotation for Louisville with Anna DeBeer on the back line putting some service pressure and they're able to score in transition. step in to set Iko Jones. She tips over the block and it drops. Back-to-back -back points for Louisville. Texas doesn't even get a swing out of that one. It was a low pass, but somebody needs to lift that ball so Logan Eggleston can get a swing. Remember the last time Iko Jones faced Texas was in 2019. She had 23 kills for the Cardinals for the upset. She hit 375, two and had seven digs. It was one of her best matches ever. And the block by Iko Jones! The location of the set is off the net and a little bit inside. Logan Eggleston wants it a little inside so she can work down that line. But look at Iko Jones for Louisville, way over the net. It's so interesting to hear this story for Louisville upsetting Texas in 2019 in the regional semifinal. That was the first meeting, or the last meeting, excuse me, between these two teams. I feel like that was a springboard for what Louisville has been able to do now back-to-back -back national semifinals and now their first national championship match appearance. They just keep getting better and more confident every year and they believe that they can win this match. And you were glad to see it wasn't just a one-off, that they were playing with house money that season. They continue to progress and have remained consistent in the national landscape. Logan Eggleston will use the Louisville block. Finally, Texas able to put that ball away inside the block. Good swing by Logan Eggleston. It was uncharacteristic, the performance that we saw in that first set against Logan Eggleston against San Diego back on Thursday. She was held for that match to 196. That's her lowest hitting percentage in their last 10 matches. Blocked by Texas, but you heard Katie talk about it. Logan was able to pull herself out of that tough first set. Well, I think it helps when you have teammates who step up and you saw a lot of different players. There you see Asia O'Neal put up a huge block defensively, the middle blockers for Texas need to slow down Louisville in the middle. Yeah, depth has been such a big story for this Texas team, bringing in 11 new players. Zoe Fleck is one of them, and she just dropped a serve right in the corner. Incredible. That's her 10th ace of the NCAA tournament. She goes line to line, and Texas has been really liking this line to line serve, doing it against a lot of the opponents in the tournament. They felt like serving zone five would be to their benefit. 
Well, they want the outside hitters, the two left-siders, Claire Chasse and Anna DeBeer for Louisville, to have to carry a big load, have to pass and serve, receive, and then work for their approach. Make it hard for them to put the ball away. Hey, speaking of good serves, Elena Scott, she was incredible on Thursday. Tied her career high with five service aces, and oh yeah, had 28 dicks. That one goes off of the elbow of Raquel, Ra Raquel Lothero and out of bounds. The power jam by Logan Eggleston on that left pin, attacking that right back defender. Kalea Kana stepping back for Texas, one of those six transfers that Texas added to its roster this year coming from Nebraska. Lothero to Chasse. Off hands, Claire Chasse. Claire Chasse has just grown her toolbox. She has the range to hit the sharp angle, goes off the hands, nice and flat, can turn it down the line as well. When she got to Louisville, she was touching 10 feet. She now touches 10-6 to 10-8 on a good day. She's got so much spring. Duck up by Anna DeBeer, the bump set from Scott to Chasse. Sage Kaha and Atora is going on the slide to Asia O'Neill. That could be really key for Texas. Yeah, Asia O'Neill hasn't been a huge threat for Texas offensively, but she's been putting up great defensive numbers. It's about time she have a big offensive match for the Longhorns. And if you want to talk about matchups or liabilities, Texas clearly believes Claire Chasse is one of the weaker blockers for this Louisville team. Newsflash, Louisville is aware of it. Everybody has gone after her this season. And Louisville is still third in the nation at blocks per set as a team. Texas wants to go after the pins. They want to go off Anna DeBeer, Raquel Lothero, and Claire Chasse. They feel like they can have success against all three of those pin blockers. Chasse goes at Fleck. It's tight. Sage going over on two. I'm always surprised that the front row for Louisville this is the blocking assignment, right? You have to say the setter's front row before the serve happens, and that's an easy point. No block in front of Sage. And Amaya Tillman was right there. She's one of the best blockers in the nation. She's 11th in the nation in blocks per set, first in the ACC. Another chop serve for Texas. Asia O'Neill has improved her game on both sides of the ball. Her serve, look how flat in the movement on that ball. We call that a clean serve, flat and clean from Karch Karai, of course. Now, Jared Elliott told us their serve was going to be really tough. They want to try to get Louisville out of system, get their setter on the move, talking about Raquel Lothero. Doesn't have to move much for that. Sends it out to Anna DeBeer. It was touched for the kill. Texas feels like if Raquel Lothero is on the run, that her set isn't as well located. Here, pretty nice set to Anna DeBeer, who goes, gets a piece of the block, goes deep corner. Stage going back row to Logan Eggleston. It dribbles off the tape. Louisville knows Texas is very effective out of the back row. In fact, they've been looking at numbers. Texas, in the last group of matches, has hit 340 out of the back row. Those are blistering numbers from the front row, let alone the back row. Yeah, we've seen both of these teams use that back row attack. Texas maybe not in the maybe semifinal, but definitely for Louisville. Lothero going backside to Bron Kong. They call her PK. Kong with the kill. That time, Texas had a nice deflection, but it looked like the players lost the location of the ball and couldn't do anything with it. PK and Kara Caressi battled and battled and battled throughout the season for that M2 position. Danny Bussman Kelly said, we finally just had to go with one. They went with PK. She provides a little bit more of an offensive option, certainly a natural blocker, as you guys see. But that slide that you see there is part of the reason why she's on the floor. And Katie, don't forget her career high 11 blocks in the semifinal. How could you forget it? <laughs> that fifth set was Bonkers. I did not believe what we were witnessing on Thursday night between Louisville and Pittsburgh. I think she had an out-of-body experience. She certainly did. <laughs> she had had 12 blocks in the previous three matches before 11 on Thursday. 
Eggleston tested with the pass. Sage going backside to Maddie Skinner lays it in. I love that Sage Kyle Heine Torres goes back to Maddie Skinner after she hits one out of bounds. That just shows your hitter you've got confidence. You're going to give her another chance to put that ball away. Maddie Skinner, something about this gym, she likes it. She won a national championship in this gym two years ago, playing for Kentucky, actually beating Texas in that national championship match. Flack on the fly. Logan Eggleston in! No nerves for Eggleston tonight. Fantastic transition defense. It starts with Zoe Flex sliding under this ball, lifting it, giving her setter an opportunity to push this ball out to the pin. And Logan Eggleston able to score. That's what we call a dolphin dive. Fleck is one of the best. And she says she really likes her dolphin dive too. She thinks it looks she cool. Should. <laughs> She's gonna step in and secondary set with the bump, Logan Eggleston. Net violation on Louisville. Louisville trying to slow down the Texas offense. Too yeah. aggressive at the net. And we had talked to Louisville too. They're going to read block a little bit more in this match than they had to against Pitt. So what does that look like? What's the adjustment that they have to make? Well, first of all, Danny Buspoon Kelly, the head coach for Louisville, said, look, let's read the setter. And here's a couple things she do does when she's going back or when she's going outside. So they have some clues reading the Texas setter that will help them read where the ball is going. You know, Dan Meske, the associate head coach for Louisville, he likened read blocking to defending a football team with three incredible wide receivers. He said you got to cover all three. You can't just double a guy because it leaves someone else open. You have to watch the quarterback's eyes as well. So read blocking, you got to watch the setter because Texas clearly has power. And it starts with Logan Eggleston. Do you mean like that? Logan Eggleston. Dan Meske said, First block what you see, then block what you know, but this is tough to stop. Good seam set to Logan Eggleston, only one blocker in front of her. Lothero on the move, sending it back to the right pin, and Iko Jones. Iko Jones has the physicality on the right side for Louisville to hit with a lot of range and she's gained those tools, worked on her ball control, really improved her overall game, playing with so much more confidence. It was so it was so great to talk to her yesterday. She said when she arrived at Louisville, she had limited club training. She couldn't hit cross court, she couldn't hit high line when she arrived. She redshirted and thank goodness for the Louisville coaching staff, she said. Yeah, she grew up playing outside. I mean, she was very limited in the coaching that she got, but she's quite an athlete and has progressed really well for Louisville. Texas up three here in the opening set. We play to 25. These two teams battling for a national championship. Chasse with the pass. Lothero will give it back to her. Claire Chasse, kill number three. Claire Chasse has been going deep cross court to that corner. There's no defensive player. Really nice court vision to see what's available. Two big blockers in front of her going away from Emma Halter, that middle back defender. And no attacking errors for Claire Chasse or Iko Jones, two of the pin hitters for Louisville. That serve will go wide, and Texas is the first to 15 points. Texas and Louisville, one of these teams is going to be a national champion by the end of the night. Danny Busboom Kelly is trying to become the first woman to win an NCAA championship as a head coach, and she's doing it in a city that she has a lot of great history in. It was here, back in 2006, playing for Nebraska, that she won a national title, and then came back again in 2015 as a Nebraska assistant in Omaha. They actually beat Texas in a sweep to win a national title as an assistant coach, and now trying to make history. And there's some Nebraska fans in the stands that maybe are rooting for this Louisville team. Yeah, do not uh, get confused by all of the red. That is a lot of Nebraska fans supporting their very own. They love Danny Bosman Kelly for what she provided in her time in Nebraska and would love to see her get it done at Louisville. I love what she said about it, though. She said, look, it would be great to win to be the first woman, but maybe we can just do it and then we don't have to talk about it. It won't be this thing. It'll just be a norm. Yeah, Mary Wise was the first one to take her team Florida to a championship. She would like to get rid of the conversation so it's over. You guys, I listened into Louisville's huddle just now, and Danny told her players, look, we're siding out great. 
we got to start defending. We're flying all over the place on the blocks. Our hands are undisciplined. It's going to take discipline to win this. Discipline eye work, discipline footwork, discipline hands on the block. And you have to be disciplined because you're facing a Texas team who's first in the nation in hitting percentage. They hit 335 on the season. All but five matches this year, they've hit over 300. Yeah, this is a very strong offensive team in what Danny Busboom Kelly said. She said, look, the biggest challenge is they've got weapons in every position and that back row attack. Yeah, Louisville's defense is their strength. Six in the nation in opponent hitting percentage. Texas's offense, it's strength. Here comes Claire Chasse, already four kills to leave the Cardinals, a first team All-American. Down the line at Kayla Akana, since Sage on the move, the setup for Skinner, down the line, off the block. Sage Kahaina Torres locates this ball really well for Maddie Skinner. It's pretty quick and flat, gives her time to go over the top of the block. Asia O'Neill already has an ace tonight. That one just long. Both you and I noticed the hitting percentages so far. Louisville hitting 500, Texas hitting 611. Those are really high offensive numbers to start the match. It's really different than the start we saw for Texas on Thursday against San Diego. Coming out and hitting under 100, specifically Logan Eggleston in that first set against San Diego had four kills, but four errors. She hit zero. Meanwhile, tonight she started hitting 556. Sage to Skinner. Off the block of Lothero by herself. She'll set Chasse out of the back row. Both you and I were impressed with the back row attack of Louisville on Thursday night. Look at this option. Claire Chasse looks like Louisville's in trouble, but a little crossbody to that right back position scores for Louisville. What does Great. that do to a block? It stresses them out because she is a weapon out of the back row. There she goes again, this time with a roll shot. Fleck fighting for it, but a couple of kills out of the back row for Claire Chasse. And what a heady play by Chasse. You go with power, a swing ago, and now you make the dig. You get ready in transition, and look, a little do -si do A nice finesse shot just over those fingertips. Six kills already for Chasse. Slide with Kayla Caffey. That was short, right down the line. The set was perfect from SKT, the setter for Texas. And Kayla Caffey can get up. She's only six feet, but the arm speed to attack down that line outside the block of Louisville. Caffey started her career at Missouri, then transferred to Nebraska, and now a Texas Longhorn. Her swing ends a 3-0 run by Louisville. Service long from Sage Kahaina Torres. You see Texas going at the left side attackers in serve receive. Claire Chasse, Anna DeBeer, but missing those balls long. That's the fourth service error from Texas. If you're Louisville and Raquel Lothero going back to serve, you gotta capitalize on the unforced errors. Skinner will take this out of system swing. Dug up by Chasse. Lothero to DeBeer. Blocked by Texas Maddie Skinner. I'll tell you, I really like that dig by Louisville and the way they got a good swing out of it. But Texas block was huge, way over the net. Well formed. Kayla Caffey gets out to Maddie Skinner. Look at the forehands, big press over the net for Texas. Service error. Three straight service errors for Texas. You know, going back to Texas's block, we saw the great press there. It's something that has developed later on in the season. Usually Texas is a really good blocking team. Because of all the new pieces, they had to do a very hardcore focus on offense early in the season. Yeah, they wanted to establish their offense and the way they like to contact that first ball and run their offense before they focused on defense, and that's why it's been a late peg in developing. Eggleston has seven kills. A much better start than Thursday. Look at Eggleston go down that line. 
Texas on purpose sets the ball about three feet inside the antenna because both of their left side pins can attack with range down that line. Combination play, Claire Chasse. Logan Edelson with the swing, De Beer saves it. They'll go right side, Iko Jones. Emma Halter, the bump set to Eggleston, it's tight. Beautiful set by Elena Scott. Jones again, Halter with an arm out. Free ball back to Louisville. Lathero going chasse. I am loving the defense on both sides of the net. Watch this one arm stab by freshman Emma Halter for Texas. And then again, another one by Zoe Fleck to stay in that rally. Watch the end of this rally. Asia O'Neill, big right hand to close up that scene for the Texas block. Jared Elliott told us you need at least three premier passers, a libero and a couple of DSs if you want to win a national championship. Emma Halter clearly showing that she's capable of the challenge. Yeah, Jared Elliott said, hey, if you want to win a championship, you need three littles, and he's got them right now. Yeah, absolutely. Emma Halter coming in just a freshman. You combine her with Zoe Fleck and Kayleigh Akana, two very experienced players. Zoe Fleck, the Big 12 Libero of the Year. She is already a two-time Pac-12 Libero of the Year. What an addition. And when we talked to Jared Elliott, he said, you know what, Emma Halter's a freshman, and on the big stage, she passed almost a 3.0 on Thursday. Yeah, it is not just about the big attackers the players that get the big swings in the front row. Really for both sides, on Thursday, we saw just a highlight reel for these Libros talking about Zoe Fleck and also Elena Scott for Louisville. Elena Scott put on a show. She was a setter in high school, so we get to see her hands in transition. But five aces in that semifinal match. Zoe Fleck, always fun to watch. She is a human highlight reel. Serving top and keeping the Texas Longhorns in system. And these two, the unsung, unsung heroes of these two teams because they work so hard. Yeah, I mean, they are on the floor all the time, keeping the ball alive, hitter coverage, connecting with the rest of their teammates. Both have dynamite serves, too. Here's Fleck. Texas trying to be the first to 25. Louisville not going anywhere yet. Iko Jones. 15 in red. Iko Jones. She elevates Raquel Lothra really good at pushing that ball behind her. Iko Jones goes high seed. Fourth kill for Iko tonight. No attacking errors. Here's Elena Scott. Goes at Halter. Sage has to hustle Eggleston. Going to push it to the back corner. How about the hustle by Sage Kahina Torres? Really tough serve by Elena Scott. Little shank to the left side of the court, but an apex on that ball allows Logan Eggleson to attack it. Just threading the needle. What precision from Logan Eggleston. Out of system situation, betters the ball. That's why she's the national player of the year. Yeah, Logan Eggleston already with eight kills, and she is hitting 538. What a different start than we saw on Thursday. Oh, an unbelievable start using the block as she sees movement up front. She's getting it done from the backcourt as well. And what's so interesting about this set, sometimes it's inside a couple of feet, like Holly mentioned. Sometimes it's all the way out to the pin, and yet she just does such a phenomenal job tracking the ball, and it really messes with that right side blocker on Louisville side. Yeah, when we talked to Coach Jared Elliott, he said, look, we like her coming inside because she can hit with such range in the angle, but it really opens up her line and neutralizes the block. Yeah, and we saw a lot, too, in Louisville's practices the last two days. They actually put, they took tape to the net and put a blue X up on the net to try to move that block a little bit in because they knew that they were going to set was going to be a little bit inside. Yeah, Dan Meske, the ABCA coach, assistant coach of the year for Louisville, had a blocking scheme, lots of focus on what they wanted to do and position-wise, how to slow down Texas. 
I want to let you know on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC, you can catch some women's college basketball. It'll be number two, Stanford, hosting Tennessee. Stanford only one loss on the season, and that's to the number one team in the nation, South Carolina. You can see the Lady Vols and the Cardinal on ABC Sunday at 3 Eastern, also on the ESPN app. Texas three points away from taking the opening set. Nakana continues to serve. Tapir gets it up. Lothero out to Chasse. To the back row. Claire Chasse with her seventh kill for Louisville. We've seen her go to that deep corner, but that time she saw an opening down the line. Incredible court vision and range offensively. Now what a start for our two stars in this match. Chasse with seven kills, Eggleston with eight. Sage out to Eggleston, off speed. Sit right back at Fleck. Take two for Logan. Logan Eggleston very comfortable attacking down that line at that right back defender. Iko Jones is playing defense right here. She's got to put her helmet on because Logan Eggleston is coming with the pace. And now she'll step back to serve the Big 12 career leader in aces. Down the line. Chasse with the tip. To beer out of the back row. Net violation on Texas. Just a really nice job by Anna DeBeer calling out, communicating to Amaya Tillman, who's backpedaling there and has to bump set it. Just really nice communication there by the cards. Asia O'Neill's looking at her coach saying, I did not touch the net. So Jared Elliott is up. This is a play that they could challenge. You only get two challenges per match, though, unless we go to a fifth set. Watch Asia O'Neill in the middle of the court. Oh, yeah, her Look. left hand. Yeah. And Jared Elliott will not challenge this. He will keep his two challenges. Louisville has to be disciplined knowing that the Texas setter right now is in the front row. Just long for Louisville on the serve at set point, Texas. Boy, that was close. Texas is going to bring in a blocking sub. Number 44, Devin Kahahawai, is going to check in for Texas. And that means Kayleigh Akana will be the setter if Texas is able to dig this ball. Asia O'Neill with the serve. Scott underneath it. Lothero to Amaya Tillman on the slide. Second set point, Texas. Amaya Tillman very comfortable going off one foot. Look at her attack through that seam. Nice power. She's strong defensively, but much better on that slide attack right there. And Pitt did a nice job of slowing her down on the slide on Thursday in the semifinal. Fleck takes it. Sage going back row with Eggleston. It ricochets off of Louisville. Set one to the Longhorns. Both teams hit for extremely high numbers. Louisville 400, 517 in the first set for Texas. Logan Eggleston with 10 kills to help Texas take the opening set in the national championship match. Set two on the way from Omaha. National Championship here in Omaha. Texas takes the first set 25 to 22.
Texas added 11 new players this season. Six of them were transfers. So in the offseason, they took extra time to get to know each other and team build. build. One of those things was going down to the Texas National Championship rowing program, getting in a boat and trying to figure things out. And it wasn't easy. They also had to read a chapter from Row the Boat by John Gordon, and they learned about working together. They said the best they could do is eight strokes together. Logan Eggleston said she was really bad at it. Yeah, <laughs> and Logan Eggleston is good at a lot of things. Exactly. <laughs> Surprise, think, they fit in that right? Right? I, boat, right? But I think getting outside your comfort Six, zone is three. so good for growth. It certainly paid off. The culture of this Texas program much different this year with these new players, with this new attitude. It's gotten them here to this national championship match. If you missed the first set, my goodness. Both of these teams came out high offense. Claire Chasse with seven kills. Logan Eggleston already has 10 kills. Incredible. So he flex starting the serve. Anna DeBeer. Back to DeBeer off the Texas block. Sage Kahana Torres. Molly Phillips with the kill. You know, Louisville staff told the players in between sets, it's like we just faced Julia Bergman from Georgia Tech. Logan Eggleston had 10 kills. It's just like we're playing Georgia Tech in a way. We're waiting for too much information. You got to be aggressive and go to the ball. Use your instincts. They said, we played zero defense and had a chance to win that thing. Yeah, it can be so helpful when you're facing an unfamiliar opponent to relate them to someone that you faced during the regular season. As you see, Eggleston with the block. The eye work by Logan Eggleston, watching her hitter, being disciplined with those hands over the net. Really nice solo block by Logan Eggleston. The National Player of the Year, the very first National Player of the Year at Texas, if you can believe it. And the ace! Zoe Fleck again going to that area five, which is down that line deep. Comes up high on Anna DeVere and gets away from her. Texas has seven points off of 10 serves by Zoe Fleck. Back at DeBeer. Lafaro is going to push. Pagran Kong. DeBeer. There it is for Anna DeBeer. What a journey she's been on. Missed 12 matches in this season with a knee injury. They worked her back slowly. I think that's really benefited her to not rush back. And it's helped the whole Louisville team. They were able to figure out ways to win without her, so now they're better with her. You see the value of her, though. We saw it in that regional final against Oregon because she absolutely took over that match. She was telling Raquel Lothero, set me the ball late in that fourth set and, of course, in the fifth, and she was the momentum and game changer that they needed. Eggleston has 11 kills now. Louisville a little bit late on their press, and Texas makes them pay. Eggleston has started this match so aggressive. It's a fantastic sign if you're a Texas fan. Texas hitting 667 in this set. I know it's early on. Louisville, though, hitting zero here in set two. Maybe a break for the cards and a chance to regroup here on the service error by Texas. Kebe Akana trying to go that area five down the line as well. <laughs> Elena Scott to Akana. Sage to Asia O'Neill. Look at the smile on her face. When we talk to Dan Meski, the assistant coach for Louisville, he calls that play the Texas Jam, throwing it down in the middle. And I said, well, whose ball is that? Is that uh, the wing dingers? He said, guess what? It is whoever can get under that ball. All hands on deck. And Asia O'Neill is really good at There's a reason she's first in the nation in hitting percentage. Service error number seven for Texas. Both teams working hard to win that serve and pass game, and that starts with being aggressive from the service line. Three aces by the Longhorns. Iko Jones steps back, and she leads Louisville in aces this season. Sage to Maddie Skinner turning it, looking for the touch. Yes! That's that inside set that Texas likes to use. Maddie Skinner chopping it down the line, getting a little piece of the block. You see how far inside she is from the antenna, but that gives her
space to work down that line. Texas has already shown early in this match how good they can be down the line with those two left side attackers. Eggleston has used it multiple times and Skinner. Amaya Tillman off of one foot. That time Maddie Skinner, the blocker on the left side for Texas late on her press. She was in a good spot, but Tillman too quick on her swing. Louisville's at their best when they go to the middles. They establish them early and often. A great slide there by Amaya Tillman. Raquel Lothro has got to continue to keep them involved so that this block has something to think about. And that's why Jared Elliott was talking to us about keeping their setter on the run so it wasn't as easy to get the ball to the middle. Yeah, anytime a setter's on the run, the offense becomes predictable. Maybe the location of her set isn't as accurate either. Elena Scott to Lothero. Here's to Beer. Anna DeBeer towing the block, kill number four. And that pass a little bit off the net, but I think Raquel Lothero locates that ball really well. Look at her work to get her feet there and push that ball out with pace. Anna DeBeer knows what to do with it off the outside hand of Molly Phillips. Danny Buscombe Kelly told us the two biggest questions coming into the season was how was Raquel going to fit in? She arrived late in July and also the middles and Raquel Lothero has been such a huge pickup because that was a question mark. Who was going to replace Tori Dilfer? Well, transfers are the name of the game, right? And I just think it's a testament to Raquel Lothero. She got there in late July, as you mentioned. To be able to build that rapport and chemistry with her hitters in five months time is unbelievable. Skinner on the swing and the kill. Maddie Skinner swinging from left side and right side. When she played for Kentucky, she was actually that right side player. But now, left side for Texas. Yeah, talking to her, I feel like she likes being able to train that left side consistently. So they've really worked on her all around game, too. Well, that's her goal, to be a six rotation player. And we saw her for a part of the season playing six rotations in serve receive, hitting out at the back row, and I think she was fantastic. And her serve has been big, too. That's service ace number four for Texas. Watch how flat this serve is. Just gets right down into that corner for the ace. Pass was tight over on Texas's side. And Lothro, you're going to see the setter a lot of times win that. She is fire. I love her energy, but she just battles at the net, winning the battle on the tight ball with middle blocker Kayla Caffey of Texas. Setters are really good at this because it happens a lot. That tight pass, you have to turn and defend that ball. There's her family, her mom, Marta, her sister, Mar, on the left. They have come all the way from Spain to watch Raquel Lothero play in the national championship match. <laughs> Dug up by Scott. Lothero calls on Chasse out of the back. Texas's block, got it! <laughs> Louisville had had a lot of success on that back row attack. They have in Texas. Got Six hands in front of it on that one. Good defensive block at the net on the back row attack. Iko Jones in the middle. Eggleston on the swing. Iko will take it. Lothero lays out. And it hits the antenna, Point Texas. Louisville working hard defensively to stay in that rally. Just can't control that last tip. And Danny Buscombe Kelly wants to take a timeout here. Texas up 11 to 6 in set number two in the national championship. We knew serving would be an important part of this match. Zoe Fleck with an ace down the line. Texas actually has four. You see Maddie Skinner go cross court. But here are the service areas that you can attack. One is that right back location where they've had success as well as area five. And then the two, three, and four is that short serve. But Texas going after one and five and that's where they've had success against Louisville.
Chasse will take this. Lothero to Debeer. Anna Debeer, look, she can flip the switch and take over. She certainly can. There is some space to work around the Texas block. Texas block needs to be disciplined against a hitter like Anna Debeer. 15 kills on Thursday in the semifinal against Pitt, but she also tied her career high with five service aces. Four errors for Louisville, seven service errors for Texas. Kayla Iacona came to Texas in 2017 for a camp when she was in high school. And ever since then, on her vision board, was Texas winning a national championship. A great opportunity in front of her. Chasse just hanging in the air. She'll get a second swing. Sage to Eggleston, tipped back by Jones. Akana's going to set up Logan Eggleston. Logan Eggleston working the outside hand. Iko Jones and PK are a dominant block. Look how big that block is. But Logan Eggleston working that outside hand for success. She never hits the same shot twice. She learns as she plays. Iko Jones has to run in for it. Halter bump set to Eggleston. What a back set by Elena Scott to Chasse, but it sails. Going back to Logan Eggleston, we asked her after the Thursday match, did you ask Sage to adjust the set? And she said, absolutely. Yeah, and she knows enough that she wasn't playing how she wanted to play. So she made an adjustment, brought it inside, and went to her bread and butter, which is down that line. You see how good it can be in this match. She already had 10 kills in the first set alone. She's got two here in set number two. Throw it down, Logan! When we watched Texas serve and pass today, they said, look, we're going to serve tough. We're going to get overpass opportunities, and you see one right there. And Louisville's going to take a timeout. It is a 4-0 run by the Longhorns in set two. It was a really cool moment. I All I heard was remember my teammates just like yelling and screaming and cheering. And so I felt a lot of love. Um, it's honestly a team award. I think I obviously couldn't be successful without all the things that my teammates have done throughout the year to help me be successful. So it just felt really great to be on stage for Texas volleyball and just showing off what we've been able to do this year. Logan Eggleston, the national player of the year, the first in Texas to win that award, if you can believe that. And you heard her talk about her team. She told us before the semifinals, I came to Texas worrying about my game but now I'm focused on my teammates. And I think it makes her a better teammate, right? That she's selfless in all these players. This is the best culture Texas has ever had, according to head coach Jared Elliott. And you can see in the way they play. Jose saved by Halter. Jones sends it back. Sage going to O'Neal on the slide. Lothero pushing it to Claire Jose for her eighth kill. Speaking of that culture, Courtney, I thought it was interesting. Maddie Skinner ultimately didn't want to come to Texas initially. She said, I thought that there was a culture problem and I had to do my due diligence. And she had conversations with Logan Eggleston, frank conversations. And Eggleston said, hey, if you come here, you can help me change the culture and we can make it something special. We can make it where people aren't worried about individuals and they're just focused on the team. And you're seeing that all season long. And I love that. You can feel it from all the players. The coaching staff, nobody wants this season to, get, to end because there's been no drama. And that's hard to do on a volleyball team. The ace for Elena Scott. Elena Scott leads the NCAA tournament in aces. Edelson in the cross court. No, it's a point for Louisville. Logan Eggleston has a huge block in front of her, Tillman and Iko Jones. That time she tries to go inside. Elena Scott with 14 aces, Logan Eggleston two behind her at 12. This is in the tournament. Most in a single tournament by Scott since 2014. Halter really had to work to save that. No, Iko Jones says no. Welcome to my block party, am I right? Iko Jones getting up and extending 
for an incredible block, and I was just in the huddle. Look at that extension over, going one-on-one, -on -one, mono -a mono against Logan Eggleston. Danny Busboom Kelly said in the last timeout, we are at our best when we are having fun. Before this run, she said, no one's making eye contact, we don't have energy, it looks like nobody wants the ball. A great reminder for the Louisville Cardinals that they've gone on a great run here. And that's true, we've been hearing it all week. It's like, let's keep it light, let's smile, let's enjoy the moment. That's when we play our best volleyball. Yeah, that's exactly what Anna DeBeer said that they did after the fourth set against Pitt on Thursday. They looked at each other and said, let's play loose, let's play goofy and fun. Came out and won the fifth set 15 to two. Yeah, it's important to be in the moment, be present, have a good time. Well, on Sunday, you can catch a double header from the Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase on ESPN. First game up, 1 p.m. Eastern, Florida State versus number nine, UConn. And then at 3 p.m. Eastern, it'll be number 14, Iowa State. Ashley Jones taking on number 25, Villanova. Again, that's at 1 and 3 on ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow. Texas won the first set here in the national championship match, 25 to 22. They had 10 kills from Logan Eggleston. Up here, 15 to 11, but Louisville on a 4-0 run right now. And that's all they need, right? A little bit of momentum, and they can make things happen. We saw them against Pitt let, let them score big runs and give up big runs. So they need to figure out how to score big runs. And Elena Scott on the back line is a strong rotation for Louisville. What a luxury to have Elena Scott. She was a setter in high school, so she has beautiful hands. Such a scrappy libero. You combine that with a killer serve. The whole package goes after Akana. Sage on the slide to O'Neal. Lothar to Chasse. Logan tipped it. It was tipped back by Jones. And it's a beer out of the back row, dug up by Akana. Alter steps in to bump set Eggleston. We play on. Until Logan Eggleston says so. The back row defense has been spectacular, as has the net play of Iko Jones. But this is the Texas Jam, a little bit deeper into the court than usual. But Dan Meske, the assistant for Louisville, said, this is going to come. Let's be ready for it. He thinks it happens about every four swings. Wow. Especially when they see a big block in front of them. Both teams get a second to breathe here after a long rally. Chasse. Maddie Skinner with the tip, Lothero with the dig. Claire Chasse takes it again. Chasse is long. Claire Chasse staying aggressive in transition. She didn't have any great opportunities, but she did not let up. She was going for it. That's the kind of mentality, the kind of attitude Claire Chasse has had all season. She was thrown into that six rotation role when Anna DeBeer was out. Guess what? She was ready. That's why she's a first team All-American this season. Iko Jones with the readjustment going sharp angle right at the center. Skinner. They say it touched the block and let them play on. Scott set a little too far outside. Louisville getting some good defensive touches, but not getting well-located swings in transition, and that's why they're not able to score. Eighth service error by Texas. Slide by O'Neal, they call her the Slide Queen. And 
she shows you why. She is so dynamic, gets up, quick swing through that scene for the Texas kill. Zoe Fleck delivers a perfect pass. I don't know why Louisville is serving Zoe Fleck, but Asia O'Neill ha knows how to score on that slide ball. Alexa Hendricks handles it for Louisville at Chasse. Oh, the dead kill by O'Neill! Doesn't matter if she's up on one foot, swinging away on the slide, or she's just bodying Claire Chasse's ball. The result in a kill with the overpass. And she's worked really hard on being balanced defensively, being in a good spot, and being comfortable to make that play. She's come a long way in that area. You know, she has a goal. Her dad, Jermaine, was a six-time NBA All-Star, never won a championship. She'd love to get a ring for him. Sage to Skinner. Net violation on Louisville on Lopero. The offense of Texas puts so much pressure on you. They've got so many weapons. Even though the setter's front row, they've got two lethal attackers and then Logan Eggleston coming out of the back row. And Louisville's gonna make a sub here. They'll bring in Ellie Glock, number five in red for Louisville to replace LaFaro. She's played at nine sets this season for the Cards. Stepped up when Raquel Lockero went down with an ankle injury earlier in the season. Block setting Tillman. Skinner was the block. Just say inside the court through the block of Texas. And Courtney, we saw Danny Busboom Kelly make this same sub in the regional final against Oregon. They went with Glock just to give Raquel Lothero a second to breathe on the sideline and regroup. So it works out and Louisville is able to get a point. Louisville trying to mix things up, inserting some new players into the lineup. Yeah, number three, Nena Mbanu is in the front row now for, tech for Louisville. And it's an ace for the cards! Aiden Bartlett, known for a tough serve. She comes in and brings a spark from the service line. Yeah, in the regional final against Oregon, she served them on a 6-0 run in the fifth set. Pass is tight. It's tangled up in Tillman's hands. How about Sage Kahaina Torres knowing that pass was going over, ready to make a defensive play at the net. Texas needing three points to take set two. Block with the bump set. Molly Phillips. Texas is winning the serve and pass game. They're serving tough enough to get Louisville off the net, and then Louisville's not getting a good enough swing to put the ball away. Clock going back row with just say, no touch, set point Texas. National Championship. Texas is playing extremely well offensively. They're winning that pass game. Zoe Fleck, you can't, if you're Louisville, you can't keep the ball on Zoe Fleck. She passes the ball too well. Now she's the Big 12 Libero of the Year for a reason. Texas is hitting 433 in this match. Jarrett Elliott is with Katie. Thanks, Courtney. Jarrett, there's a lot to like. What impressed you most about those first two sets? Well, we've been really consistent from the from the side-out game, and we've been scoring points in 
transition. I mean, Logan's been really good so far in our transition swing, so putting a lot of pressure on him. If we can clean up a few more service errors, it'll be a lot better for us. You're one set away. What will you tell your team in this next huddle? we got to stay locked in right now. I mean, this is a concentration game. We've been winning the long rallies. We've been playing cleaner than them, and it's about our concentration level. Thank you. Thank you. Texas can feel it. They are one set win away from a national championship, but you can bet that the Louisville Cardinals aren't going anywhere. Set number three from Omaha, moments away. The national championship here in Omaha, Nebraska, and Texas is in the driver's seat right now. They won the first two sets after taking set two, 25 to 14. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings as teams compete for a combined $500,000 in student athlete scholarships from Capital One. Right now on the men's side, Cal in that first place. And on the women's side, North Carolina. We'll keep an eye on this one for you. What an incredible first two sets. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPee, Katie George also with us for this national championship. Wow, do you think Texas wants this? Yes, it, it sounds cliche. We always talk about the serve and pass game, but they're dominating in that area. And if you're Louisville, you cannot serve the ball at Zoe Fleck. You have to go at somebody else. And yeah, we saw Logan Eggleston with 10 kills for Texas in the first set, but Asia O'Neill, I thought she really got more involved in set number two. And we haven't been calling her name offensively a lot, mostly defense, but she was on fire. Five kills on nine swings, two blocks, one dig and one ace. That's a nice stat sheet for Ajo O'Neill so far. Yeah, she had three of those kills in the second set where she hit 500. <laughs> Saw her block step up to two blocks for Asia O'Neill. We mentioned she wants to win that championship for her dad who played in the NBA but doesn't have a ring. Meanwhile, Louisville, it's time to regroup and Danny Busboom Kelly is with Katie. Thanks, Courtney. Danny, what do you need to see from your team to get back in this thing? Uh, a defensive effort. You know, we have 19 digs and two blocks, and that's just not us. So really disappointing. Uh, easy tips are falling, and feels like we're just letting their physicality get to us. Thanks for the time. And Louisville is such a strong defensive team coming into this one. But it's tough to stop the best offensive team in the country. The only way to do it is to serve and get them out of system. And as you mentioned, they should probably serve away from Zoe Fleck. I would agree. Texas hitting 433. This Texas team has hit 300 in all but five games this season. One of those was the semifinals on Thursday, but not tonight. Before the break, Jarrett Elliott told Katie, we have to stay locked in. We have seen Texas lose focus a couple of times in this tournament. We have. We've seen them blow teams out in two sets and then uh, relax. And they cannot do that against a team like Louisville. You let them back into the match and momentum changes, changes jerseys. If Louisville's going to lean on anybody, I can bet it's going to be Anna DeBeer. She gets fired up. She has taken this team on her back before, and she's going to start off serving for set number three. Louisville must win this set to extend the match. Molly Phillips. Dug up by Lothero. Texas back to its original lineup. We saw that, excuse me, Louisville back to its original lineup. We saw them make some changes at the end of set two. Molly Phillips slicing and dicing. She likes that hard angle hit, which draws the block inside, and then she crushes it down the line. She arrived to Texas as a middle blocker, then moved to the opposite position she's playing in now, her sophomore season. Whatever she needed to do for the team, she was willing. Iko Jones, long, no touch, and she can't believe it. Louisville team looking at their coach saying, look, there was a touch there. Danny Busboom Kelly will challenge this. The original call was no touch. Each team gets two challenges. If you're correct in your challenge, you get to keep it. Was there a touch on this ball? I thought it got flack a little bit. Let's look up at the net first. Not quite sure.
I don't see a touch at the block. Did you see a touch by Fleck? I, I didn't, but I thought there might have been. She did a little matrix move to avoid it. Do you think she knows what the matrix is? She I hope so. Old enough. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be obvious for them to overturn this. Again, the original call was no touch. I like the end zone view. It goes outside Logan Eggleston. I thought it got a little piece of Zoe Fleck's hand. Not positive, though. Still looking at this at the monitor, first challenge that we've had tonight. Also a good chance for Louisville to pause here after Texas has two quick points in set number three. Does it hit Fleck? There's a lines person right behind her. I definitely didn't see one on the block, maybe Fleck. But it has to be definitive to overturn it. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough for them to overturn this. And you wonder if it catches her right hand as it sails by, and that line judge where they're positioned can't see through her. So it would be hard for them to make that call in the moment. That's a good point, Katie. We'll see what the call is. <laughs> They do see a touch on this, so this will be Louisville point, and Louisville will keep its two challenges, both teams with two challenges remaining. And a touch, they did see it on the Libero. They did see it on Zoe Fleck when they went and looked at the monitor. swings for Molly Phillips here in set three. I talked earlier about avoiding Zoe Fleck and serve receive. Emma Halter is crushing it. She is passing so well. So you have to avoid those two. Maybe serve some short balls. Maybe serve Logan Eggleston when she's in the front row. Make her take a piece of the court. Kaylee Iconis serve hits the tape and falls on the Texas side. Iko Jones, five kills for her today, 385 hitting percentage. Ty Amaya Tillman says, don't challenge me. Amaya Tillman, one of the best defensive blockers at the net. She is ready to battle on this one. Sage brings it. But Tillman all over it for Louisville. Absolutely love that angle from our crew. Louisville, its first lead in the match since it was 3-2 to two in the first set. Eggleston had to tip that with her left hand. In comes Chasse. Sage back to Eggleston. Lothro on the move to Chasse, the up from Fleck. And Asia O'Neal behind the setter. Texas Jam, and that's where Dan Meske had a big blue piece of tape today at practice saying, this is where they throw the ball down. We need to take it away from them. That cannot drop. Tillman on the slide. Eggleston back row. Wow! In transition, Logan Eggleston cross body at that right back defender for Louisville. Two big blockers taking away her wrist away. That's what makes her so good. You can never lose sight of her. You can never lose track of her no matter where she is on the court. Service errors, that serve sales on Eggleston. Coming into this set tonight, Texas was hitting 400 out of the back row. Incredible. I think Louisville was hitting 250. They're very effective out of the back row, but 400 is a really high number. Skinner. Lothro uses the back row too, but Chasse had to roll it. 
Skinner a little more heat behind that. Texas hitters moving the location of attack. That time Maddie Skinner comes way inside. Opening things up offensively at the net. Look at the kills for Texas. Maddie Skinner with six. Asia O'Neill with six. Molly Phillips with six. Eggleston with 15. The balance. Except for the Logan Eggleston part. Amaya Tillman, there's some fire behind that swing. She's the team hype player, brings the energy. Watch her go off one foot wide and brings it sharp cross court in that corner. Good response from Louisville so far here in set number three after they drop set two, 25 to 14 to Texas. Anna DeBeer wanted all of it. Louisville is starting to look like the team that we saw in the semifinals. Really nice response. Anna DeBeer solo block. PK a little bit late to help, and DeBeer takes care of business. And Texas out of rotation. You do not see that call very often. Jared Elliott sprints over to argue this call. He's going to send Logan, who is the floor captain, over to talk to the up official. The floor captain, the only player and person that can approach the up official. This is not something you can challenge. Exactly. with the bump set to Skinner. Lothero using the back row attack with Jose. Madison Skinner. Ricocheting off that defense and Maddie Skinner has kill number seven. I love the way she got her feet to that ball to attack at high contact point. Gives her a lot of range to put it away. Eleven service errors now for the Longhorns. Raquel Lothero, the transfer from USC. Sage Tamali Phillips, who swings on the left side in this rotation. Iko Jones dug by Sage. Eggleston with the hand set to Skinner. DeBeer taking the ball from behind her. Iko Jones dug by Eggleston. Free ball to Louisville. They've got to kill this. defense and this is the first time we're finally watching Louisville look like Louisville. Good block touches, good digs, and Anna DeBeer with the exclamation point. This is the best push and response we've seen from the Cardinals all night. It'll be curious to see, does Texas start to tighten up or do they weather the storm? It was touched, killed by Skinner. Really fast, quick set behind the setter to Skinner. And she's just so tough to stop. So many weapons in the front row for Texas. Madison Skinner, a third team All-American selection this season in her first year with the Longhorns. Lothero, the bump set to DeBeer, rejected by Phillips. Take two. 
Molly Phillips has been staying at the end of practice, getting those reps, setting up in front of the hitter and make sure she's disciplined with her press over the net and it pays off right there for Texas. Jared Elliott told us today, Molly Phillips is super competitive, especially in a tough match. I go Jones swinging in the middle of the floor. DeBeer does get that touch. That time Anna DeBeer attacks that seam, getting a little piece. A couple of kills in this set for Anna DeBeer. She has seven on the match. Give her 16 kills. Fantastic use of the block. She's got a wall in front of her, but getting creative going off that outside hand. Jones. The Texas block. I love the way Asia O'Neill is patrolling the net for Texas. She is so good laterally, and look at her finish that block back into the court, making sure to get her hips around and the presses there defensively. She's doing a really nice job. She's not only physical, she's just got incredible closeout speed, being able to get there in time to seal up that seam. Can you believe, too, that it's been almost three years since she had open heart surgery? It was January of 2020. She had the second open heart surgery of her life, and she has benefited, actually, from that. That procedure really helped her endurance and what she's been able to do, and here she is since then playing in her second national championship match. O'Neal with the throwdown. Just say! The story right now is the defense of Louisville. Their coach inspired them to pick some balls up, pick up the pace, and play their style of volleyball. And it is paying off right now. Claire Chasse chops it down the line for the kill after the dig. Louisville had this mindset going into the fifth set against Pitt. Danny Buscombe Kelly said, we talked, we're not going to lose. We're going to out-team Pitt. And they did that. They all came together and had a dominant performance in the fifth set, 15 to 2. When we talk about the culture on Texas, same thing's happening on the other side of the net. This is a group of Louisville players who loves one another. They put in the work together, and they want a great showing tonight. Yeah, a couple of voices in that huddle when they needed them. Amaya Tillman and Anna DeBeer. Lothrow, a back row player right now, called for violation. And that ties it here in set number three, a must-win set for Louisville, a win for Texas, and they get a title. Lothrow and Tillman in the middle. Fleck will bump set Eggleston. Touch! That second contact by Zoe Fleck, the first one by her, setting up Logan Eggleston in transition. Really nice location. Logan Eggleston likes it a little inside so she can go flat or back to the line. First lead for the Longhorn since it was 5-4 to four in this set. Texas on a 3-0 run. Iko Jones will get the call. She answered. Iko Jones out of Jamaica. She's so physical. She matches up very well with that Texas block. Learned the game playing outside with her parents. They would have friends over and play on the grass. And she never thought, hey, I'm going to be a Division I volleyball player playing for a national championship. It was just for fun with her family. That is just so good for Asia O'Neal. Dad the, loves it. The slide queen in the house, number seven in white, Asia O'Neal. She is putting on a clinic, both offensively and defensively. Look at the elevation. I feel like that connection struggled a little bit last week at the regional and maybe some in that semifinal, but not tonight. 
I agree, I, but I think when she was struggling offensively, she turned it up defensively. Yeah, kudos to her for not letting it affect the rest of her game. Raquel Lothero, sneaky, sneaky. It happened earlier against Louisville, but if you're Texas, you need to know the setter is in the front row, and the blocker needs to have her hands up, ready to go. Maddie Skinner taking a step out to try and defend Tillman on that slide. And a perfect pass from Alexa Hendricks right on the dime, allowing Lothero to go up and take it if she wanted it. Now, this core of Louisville DS is, is so solid. So is Texas's. Here comes Tabir. And the Tabir's being relentless, attacking that outside hitter of SKT, the blocker on the right pin for Texas. Louisville the first to 15. What a tight third set in our national championship match here in Omaha. This is the Louisville we're used to seeing. They've turned it around here in set number three in the national championship. Anna DeBeer with eight kills. Three of those have been so timely here in this third set. Yeah, Louisville right now is playing inspired defense. That's what they do best when they play their best, both at the net and behind, and it's paying off. But Anna DeBeer knows how to end a rally. Anna DeBeer, a Louisville native. You, late native, you know that she wants to help this Cardinals program make history tonight. They've never won an NCAA title. And it's going to be Louisville out of rotation. You know, watching Anna DeBeer, she is that feisty player. And maybe didn't expect to enter, to start her career and go to play at Louisville, but she watched the Cardinals growing up. Look at baby Anna DeBeer. She looks the same. Yeah. A little bit bigger. <laughs> oh my gosh. And look at her with these teammates here. Roxanne McVay on the left, my maid of honor, by the way. Maya McClendon in the middle, and Tess Clark, a great All-American middle blocker for the cards. Same photo, it looks like, from Anna DeBeer, by the way. Yeah. It's incredible. She grew up a Louisville fan in here, competing, representing Louisville at the highest level on the biggest stage. And she told us, look, I didn't originally think I would stay at home and play, but Danny convinced me that maybe it would be really cool to play for the hometown team. They're still talking about this outer rotation call on Louisville. Again, not something you can challenge. Well, it's rare when you're serving that there's some sort of overlap. Usually you see an overlap in serve receive. Bus Danny Busman Kelly was issued a yellow card, delaying the game. <laughs> Maddie Skinner comes out and gets the block, eighth block for Texas. Maddie Skinner all over this play. Look at her get outside and then the press to finish it back into the court for the Texas roof. Three blocks in this set for Texas. Scott steps in to take the pass. Tillman on the slide. Look at that. How about the confidence from Raquel Lothero, 22 in red, going right back at Amaya Tillman, even though she got stopped. And Tillman gets it around the block, down the line for the kill. I thought she was about to chest bump her teammate out of the gym. Energy behind Amaya Tillman. Texas has been insistent often tonight, and that's why their hitting numbers are so good. They are hitting 422 on the match right now. Maddie Skinner with nine kills for Texas. Sage Kahaina Torres serving. Chasse dug by Eggleston. That was pretty. Phillips. Chasse giving it second life, free ball to Texas. Skinner, crushed it. Louisville 
made some good defensive plays, but they're behind the point the whole time. They're chasing, trying to stay alive, and Texas is on the hunt. Look at this offensive threat. Maddie Skinner, big exclamation point there. Maddie Skinner now the second player for Texas in double figures. She has 10. Logan Eggleston leading the Longhorns with 17. 10 of those came in the opening set. How have you seen Texas weather the storm here in set three? Because Louisville came out with some momentum. They certainly did, but it's this staying in system and serve receive. Louisville has not been able to get them off the net and all the hitters are putting up good numbers. And so it puts so much pressure on Louisville to stop them. Texas also has eight blocks, so their offense working hard, hitting 430, and then their defense working with those eight blocks. Jarrett Elliott told us we've got to play a clean match in order to beat this Louisville team. And they have so far. Really good in serve-receive, putting up good offensive numbers. They're 100 points over their season average. Texas has also done an incredible job just siding out. Anytime that Louisville seems to get some momentum with a massive kill or a good block, Texas responds and sides out efficiently. I want to let you know the FCS Football National Championship game will be Sunday, January 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern on ABC between North Dakota State and South Dakota State. For more information on the FCS Football Championship, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Largest lead for Texas in this set. A Texas win here, and they're hoisting the trophy, looking for their third NCAA championship. Louisville trying to get its first. Great dig by Black. Dumped over by Lothero. Fleck was waiting. Elena Scott was set to beer. Phillips off hands. Lothero in the middle to Kong, and she stopped! Louisville had some opportunities. Lothero throws it in the middle. What a dig by Fleck. And then Skinner coming in and helping Kathy in the middle for the block. Maddie Skinner's already hitting 556 in this set, and now she has three blocks for the match. Eggleston is there. She got it in! Texas the first to 20. They've scored four straight points. Texas is playing their best volleyball. They met with a mindset coach last night, and you see the love in that they're all on the same wavelength. And you can tell they're playing with love for one another. And Texas five points away from a national championship. Maddie Skinner absolutely loves playing in this building and she's proving it to us again tonight after what was a great performance on Thursday. And what did Jared Elliott tell his team earlier at practice? He said, you have yet to play your best match. You have yet to play the most complete match that you can. Make that night happen. Pretty strong start for Texas. They want to win it for their team. They want to win it for their head coach, Jarrett Elliott. I can't believe how fast it's gone. It's been already 10 years. And the block! After years of near misses, it's a hit for the horns. It's been 10 years since Texas won a national championship. That was back in 2012. They also won an NCAA title in 1988. Their AIAW title came in 1981. But Jarrett told us before the match, I want this one more than any of them for this group. He does. It's a special group. It's He, he loves coming to work every day because of the culture and these athletes who want to work hard to be the best they can be. You see how Texas has fared in the national championship match. Trying to turn the tables here. Louisville led 12 to 10 in this third set. Since then, Texas has outscored them 10 to 4. Mike 
Nicole Jones. Yeah, she still just has one attacking error tonight. Raquel Lothero goes backcourt to Iko Jones on the right side. Trying to get things going for Louisville. Making it hard for Fleck to cut that ball off. And Texas is going to take a timeout. Raquel Lothero with the ace. Four aces for Louisville, four aces for Texas. Jared Elliott wants to make sure they do not let Louisville go on a run, slow things down. You know, the end could possibly be close for Texas, but he wants to make sure they're in the moment every point till the end. Yeah, that's what Zoe Fleck talked to us about. When we struggle, we're not in the present. And she's one of the big factors that helps remind them to do that. She's a great leader. And if you watch her on the court, she connects with everyone around her, making sure that she knows or they know she's got their back. Looking at this Louisville team, we were talking to Iko Jones yesterday, and she said last year it was the first time ever they made the national semifinal. They were undefeated at the time. There was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of new for this team. Well, guess what? They're experienced on this stage now. It's a different feel, so they're not going to panic. I agree. Louisville was here last year and learned a lot. They're way more comfortable. When we talked to Danny Buspoom Kelly, she said, oh my gosh, we're so much more comfortable this year than last. We had some losses, so we know what that feels like. We don't want to feel it again. Louisville has to catch up quickly. They win for Texas in this set. They take home the title. Raquel Lothero, fresh off the ace, stepping back to serve again. Just say, back row! What a great run by Raquel Lothero. Iko Jones comes underneath to dig this ball, keeps it in the center of the court, and Lothero goes back behind on the big, catches Texas blockers off guard. Great run in a very high pressure situation. A 3-0 run now for Louisville. Sage to Phillips, blocked. Skinner's turn, tooling the block, Maddie Skinner. Sage Kahaina Torres knows, just pushing that ball up towards the net. Skinner will elevate and find a way to put it away. Madison Skinner with 12 kills. Lothar on the move. They'll set Iko Jones in the middle of the court. Eggleston, too long down the line. Here comes Louisville. Louisville with no times at, with no timeouts. Texas has won. Anna DeBeer, one of their top servers, is back. That one dropped, but Fleck got underneath. Tabir will do the same. Iko Jones coming. Eggleston. Claire Chasse going off speed. Molly Phillips attacking cross court, going off the block, out of bounds. And I'm not sure it hit the block. I thought watching it live, it might have hit the tape and bounced out. Danny Busboom Kelly is going to challenge this. 
PK is so high above the net, it looks like it might have got a piece of her elbow. The original call was it was touched by the Louisville block and then went out of bounds, Point Texas. I thought there was a yeah, touch. Yeah, maybe up here. Does it graze the shoulder of Molly Phillips? And then does it hit the line? Those are two things that our down official will be looking at. And they can look at all of those on this because it is the terminal play of the rally. Watch PK, the middle blocker for Louisville. Yeah, did it hit Molly Phillips' shoulder too? I see what you're talking about, Katie. It happened right in front of us. I didn't see it hit Molly Phillips. And what about this ball dropping out? That's a great look. I did not see the ball change rotation. The next question is, did the ball drop out? Yes. I believe you're usually right. <laughs> because this is the terminating play, terminating play of the rally, they can look at all of those things. The touch call, in out. If that grabs a piece of the line, it's in. It certainly is a lot closer than I remember it the first time around. I think that might grab a piece of that white line. swing. Lothero hustling, sets it with one hand to Kong. Back over, great hustle, no, point Louisville, they have the lead. What an incredible change of momentum, and Louisville is making it happen with their defense. Fleck gets under that, but Eggleston can't get it over. Anna DeBeer's family watching on as she serves Louisville back into this. Kathy in the middle. Eggleston turns. Louisville able to dig it just too tight and then Eggleston cleans things up at the net. A race to 25 points, you have to win by two. Down the line. Here comes Chasse. Louisville in front, 23-22. Wow, Texas was successful getting Louisville out of system, but Chasse able to swing out of trouble. And that point goes to Anna DeBeer on the run, a great bump set to her teammate on the outside pin. Eggleston, there's De Beer, gets it to Lathero, she'll take the swing, down, set point Louisville! Anna De Beer is one of the most intense competitors I have ever seen and she is making plays for Louisville. 
Look at the crowd, you guys. You would think that they are all here for Louisville, and that is a testament to Nebraska fans supporting Danny Buscombe Kelly in her hometown state. You got to know they're loving what Anna DeBeer has done, whether it's setting, serving, digging, getting a kill. This woman can do everything. She certainly can work in the outside block, even out of system. She's been able to score. Big block on that left pin. She scores when she's on that back line with a tough serve. And watch her back row attack, getting through the net. Danny. Busboom Kelly says, if you have to have it, when you need it most, you go to Anna DeBeer because she delivers. She is that kind of competitor, no fear. That's why it was so important for her to get back playing six rotations. It was the regional semifinal against Baylor. We saw her for the first time really step into full-time six rotations because she, remember, she missed 12 matches with a knee injury. And she did not miss a beat. She came back in the regional semifinals, led the team in kills and the finals as well. We've seen some huge performances from her when the game is on the line. Now she was the MVP of the Louisville Regional. Beer here in the third, hitting 300 with six sticks. Nebraska fans cheering on the Louisville Cardinals, and there's a watch party, too, back in Louisville. At 1020 Craft Brewery, they're watching the Cardinals here in a must-win set. It's an 8-2 Louisville run since the cards were down 20-16 in this set. Asia O'Neal wanted it. Emma Halter is passing the ball extremely well for Texas, and that allows Asia O'Neal to get involved with the offense. That looked like a slam dunk. Learned it from Dad. This will be set point number two for Louisville. Chasse with the out of system swing. It's long, no touch. Texas is putting so much pressure on Louisville, just getting tweaks in the pass, and that's putting a lot of pressure on Chasse to hit balls out of system. Louisville is going to challenge this. They will look for a touch. Remember, Louisville does not have a timeout. So they use a challenge here. The original call, no touch on the swing by Claire Chasse, and that the ball was out. Watch O'Neal's hands. That goes deep to the corner. No touch at the net, in my opinion. Look for any finger movement as this ball goes by. See a touch? I do not. Do I don't you? either, no. Have another baseline look for you. Looks like it misses Ajo O'Neal's left hand. Even if Louisville does not win this challenge, this is a good time for them to gather as a group and focus on what they need to do. They need to pass and stay in system to get the ball back. Watch the fingers of Ajo O'Neal. No touch on it. The point will stay with Texas. We're tied for the 14th time. You have to win by two. Louisville trying to force a fourth set. Texas trying to win a title. Louisville has three hitters in the front row and one in the back row. They just need to pass. Louisville. 
Lothero choosing Iko Jones. She's blocked. Still going. Tillman. Sage to Eggleston. Net violation, Louisville. Championship point, Texas. Louisville passed the ball well on that last play. Can they do it again? Stay in system. this one more than any others because of the women on this team. And they played their best volleyball of the season on the biggest stage they could. Coach Elliott is with Katie. Thanks, Courtney. Coach Elliott, congratulations. You said you wanted this one more than the others because of who you have on this team. What makes them so special? You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> They've just been so great all year long. We've had not one problem. One through 18, everybody's given to be a part of this program to try to win. You know, you know many times you don't get that in life very much. Your kids do it the right way, and they learn the life lesson of good being good people, and it was awesome for this year. It was 24-22. Momentum was on Louisville's side. The fans clearly were rooting for one team. What did you think of the resiliency of your team to fight back to finish it in three? Amazing. I told them that uh, we're going to side out, and we're going to go win this game. And, they just have a lot of confidence, and the way that Kayla hit that last serve was amazing. What does it mean for you to watch Logan Eggleston, who has given so much to your program over the last five years, check that final box? She bookends it, baby. What a, what, what a career that she's had, and uh, so proud of her. Congratulations. Thank you. Logan Eggleston graduated high school three years early to be a Texas Longhorn. She's a five-time All-American. She's the National Player of the Year, and now she's a national champion. Incredible. It's an incredible end to her story as a Texas Longhorn. She leaves the program in a better position than when she came, and that was the goal. A big part of this championship season for Texas was a culture change. Eggleston was a big part of that. But these women came together and righted the ship it's important, 1 to 18, everybody knew their role and worked together towards this dream. The National Player of the Year, the National Champion, Logan Eggleston is with Katie. She's got some hugging to do, I think. Logan, you've got a resume that is ultra long, but this was the one that you wanted. How does it feel to accomplish it in your last match as a Longhorn? It feels amazing. I mean, this is what I've dreamed of since I was a little kid, and this is the group of people I wanted to do it with, so I'm just beyond happy right now. I really don't even have words. I'm just so happy that this is the end of my career. Like, this is exactly what I wanted it to look like. Why was this group able to do it? Because these are, we're a family. Like, we've all committed to being here for each other every single day. We've sacrificed so much, and so to come out on top, it just means so much. They've done all the work to get here, and it paid off. Congratulations, it's been a pleasure to cover your career. Thank you so much, thank you, I appreciate it. Asia O'Neill has been a long part of this Texas program. So many veterans, but to do it with 11 new players, what a statement.
it's a big challenge, right, to mesh 11 new players with the players who you already have, but it works seamlessly because of the culture that the Logan Eggleston and some of the other players work to create. In the semifinal match, we saw Texas come out with a little bit of nerves in that first set. We didn't see that today here against Louisville. Eggleston came out with 10 kills in the opening set. Yeah, I talked about them working with the mindset coach last night, and they said it was a great meeting with Courtney Thompson, and they felt all the love playing their best volleyball tonight. Maddie Skinner with 12 kills in the championship match. She's a national champion for the second time in her career, and she's with Katie. Maddie Skinner. Why do you play so well in this building? Oh gosh, I don't know. My amazing team, our amazing fans, our family. I mean, great men's in Omaha before, but even better now. I don't know, everyone felt so comfortable here and we can all say that across the board, but we just came in and we wanted it really, really bad. And I hope you can tell that, but I'm so proud of this group and I'm so grateful to be a part of this program. It was 24-22. What was said in that huddle at that moment? Hey, we just need one pass and we're in a side out. I think we got a little antsy there, but it was just a matter of us being confident in what we know we can do and just taking deep breaths and, and breeding confidence into one of each other. And, and I, I mean, it was just really a matter of us calming our nerves and playing Texas volleyball. And once we kind of got that in our head that we were going to do that, I mean, we accomplished great things. You're a two-time national champion. I know the first was so special. Why is this one with this group different? I mean, the people here are absolutely incredible. I mean, those girls are my family, and the staff has supported me from day one, and I'm, I mean, I could not be more proud to be a Longhorn, but it is so insanely special, and you can't, I mean, this feeling is incomparable, you can't. Well, you've had it twice, so congratulations. Unbelievable Thank you so performance. Much. I appreciate it. Texas was tested in set number three against Louisville, but they prevailed. The Longhorns did it with a tough serve from Kayle Akana. She gets it on an ace and puts a third NCAA National Championship trophy in the Texas Trophy Case. More to come from Omaha. The Texas Longhorns, your national champions. We get knocked down, we get back up. We'll find a way to overcome. We've got the grit to take the hits again and again. Just watch us kick down walls, break down barriers, stand up tall. The celebration is on here in Omaha, Texas. Your 2022 national champions. They defeat Louisville in three sets. This Texas team has been the number one team in the nation for most of the season. They came into the tournament as the number one overall seed with the top offense, and it was on display tonight. And they played their best volleyball when it counted. They've been number one in the country before in previous years, but haven't been able to win it all. Yeah, first time in 10 years that Texas has won an NCAA title. Time now for the trophy presentation here in Omaha. Let's get you to the PA announcer, Mark Sherman. One women's volleyball committee. Let's give all of the outstanding student athletes, coaches, and staff from the University of Louisville a round of applause. And now, presenting the 2022 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball All-Tournament Team. At center, from Texas, Sage Kaahaina Torres. Middle blocker, from Texas, Asia O'Neill. At opposite, from Louisville, Iko Jones. At outside hitter from Texas, Logan Eggleston. At outside hitter from Louisville, Claire Chasse. At outside hitter from Texas, Madison Skinner. And an outside hitter from Louisville, Anna DeBeer. And the 2022 Most Outstanding Player, as voted on by members of the media, 
from Texas, Logan Eggleston. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for our outstanding all-tournament team. And now, presenting the 2022 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball National Champions, finishing with a record of 28-1, the University of Texas Longhorns! Will the following individuals please come forward to receive your awards? Keonale Akana. <laughs> Bella Bergmar. Congratulations. Kayla Caffey. Logan Eggleston. Jenna Ewer. Zoe Fleck. Emma Halter. Riley Heinrich. Sage Kahaina Torres. Devin Kahawa. Kenna Miller. Asia O'Neill. Melanie Parda. Molly Phillips. Mariana Singletary. Madison Skinner. Marina Crownover. Deandra Pierce. Jessica Brannon. Dan Kohler. Donnie Mabe. Nathan Mendoza. Jesse Sulzer. Will head coach. Jared Elliott and the team captains, please come forward to accept the trophy. Your 2022 D1 National Champions, the Texas Longhorns. A third NCAA title for the Texas Longhorns. Jarrett Elliott with his second title at Texas. He talks so much, yeah, about what they do on the floor, but how these women are off the floor, how important it is for him to develop people. And Logan Eggleston is a perfect example of that. What she does on the court and off the court, she's special. And Texas gives them a platform to be the best they can be. And you see what happened here today, Jarrett Elliott is really proud of the culture, especially this year, that's happened on his team. Looking at how this match unfolded, Texas was able to hit 371 in the national championship match, but they did so many other little things well, too. What were you impressed with the most? Well, I just felt like they were firing on all cylinders, using their strengths because they passed so well. 
and that's a credit to Emma Halter and Zoe Fleck and obviously those other players who are passing to Sliver. Akana as well came up big serving and winning that last point on an ace. I told you about her vision board after a camp in 2017 at Texas. What a moment coming wow. to fruition. To win it on an ace for Texas, that's incredible. It is. Those were kind of the missing pieces, right? That backcourt play, the great defensive specialist, plus the setting for Texas it's really elevated this year. Yeah, the three littles. Jared Elliott talked about how important that ball control aspect with all the athletes he has offensively. And then Sage Kaahaina Torres really elevated her game, got better as the season went on. Yeah, she really had to step into that role. There's a lot of pressure being the setter at Texas. She watched last year in her first season with the Longhorns, and then she told us it took a lot of work, but I'm so glad to be in the position that I'm in. Yes, yeah, she, she watched last year, and it looks a lot different from the bench. It looks a lot easier from the bench than when you're actually out there in the heat of the moment. Texas sweeping Louisville in the national championship match tonight here in Omaha. Logan Eggleston, the national player of the year, named the most outstanding player of this in, of this NCAA semifinal and championship match. Logan Eggleston came out swinging. She didn't have her best start in the semifinal. She did have her best start in the final with 10 kills in the opening set. She finished with 19 kills, hitting 341. I think she made sure that she was going to be in the moment, enjoy this journey, and she played her best volleyball in this final match. She used that line shot a lot tonight, and Louisville, they talked about how much the Texas hitters wanted to use it, but they couldn't stop it. No, and that's the thing about stopping Logan Eggleston or Maddie Skinner on that left pin when they're brought inside. They can still hit the angle, but it's dangerous down the line if you're that right back defender. Texas officially sticking their name on that bracket. All alone are the Longhorns with a national title here in 2022. What a run it's been. More to come from Omaha in the celebration for the Texas Longhorns, victorious on the biggest stage in collegiate volleyball. Not everybody gets this feeling of winning a national championship. It's the goal when you make it to collegiate volleyball, but only the few get here to hoist the trophy. Texas is that team this year winning their third NCAA title. This will be the second title under their head coach, Jarrett Elliott in his 22nd season leading the Longhorns. They've been in six NCAA title matches under Jarrett and they were able to get it done and hoist that trophy today. Asia O'Neill has been in it for the long haul as a Texas Longhorn, and she's with Katie. Thanks, Courtney. Asia, congratulations. Thank you. Nine kills, zero errors, six something. Unbelievable performance. You're holding the net. How does it feel? It feels surreal. Like, I don't even believe that this is real life. This is a dream. It's incredible. It's incredible. Your dad's standing in the stands right now. You said you wanted to win a championship for him. Why is that? You know, my dad had an incredible career, but he was never able to get one himself, and I saw how much that hurt him, and I just told him, like, I want to get this for you. Like, I really just want to be able to share this experience with you. What do you think he's thinking now? Um, he's probably crying, and he never cries, so he's probably crying. <laughs> we'll confirm. Yeah. Congratulations Thank on an incredible season. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Pretty cool moment. For the families, for the players, for Texas. Asia O'Neill, she was just a fighter today. Nine kills, as Katie said. She had no attacking errors, and that six something was a 643 hitting percentage. Yeah, middle attackers are dependent on a good pass, right? So the backcourt took care of business, and they were able to keep her in system, and she was on fire offensively. And then, of course, three blocks as well. Yeah, one of her bread and butter plays, too, is that slide play, and it was working very well tonight. We call it the slide queen. There you see the Texas jam right to the middle of the court, but then a little exclamation point there. Defensive stop. 
When her offense isn't there, her defense picks up and vice versa. Number seven in white was special today for Texas. Yeah, I think that's what has made her so special too, is that sometimes that offense hasn't been there, like you said, but she doesn't let it affect other as aspects of her game. And so Asia and Neil, one of the many pieces for Texas that have made this run possible. And one of the leaders too with Logan, one of the experienced players who was already part of the team. Helping welcome the new players. You talked about adding 11 new players to the roster. That's a big number to incorporate and have this kind of chemistry. Yeah, and one of them is sitting with us right now. Zoe Fleck, you are a national champion. What does that feel like? I honestly couldn't tell you. I think I'm in such <laughs> bliss and surprise. I just like can't really feel anything. I had a little bit of a cry, like a pretty big cry, but it definitely hasn't hit me yet. <laughs> you, you and Emma Halter held down the backcourt, and that's why your team was so good tonight. How did that feel to end on such a high note? I honestly don't even have words for Did it. you black out? <laughs> Probably. I don't think I really remember much of that match in all honesty. But, like, never in a million years did I think that I would be part of a team that won a national championship. I know you guys met with Courtney Thompson last night. What was that meeting like as a team? I think we just all needed to remember that we were fighting for each other and how much we love each other, how much we connect with each other. And so she just asks us some um, questions about what we're fighting for, what we're grateful for. And we went around the room and everyone said what they're grateful for, what they're fighting for today. And so it makes it bigger than just the game. And it makes it so we're fighting for each other. We stay connected, regardless of what the energy is of the crowd, regardless of the distraction, regardless of what the other team is doing. We get to stay together. We get to stay connected. And we do it for each other. And I really, really felt that tonight. And a huge, huge thank you goes out to Courtney. Zoe, you told us when you were looking for your next stop in your college career, you were looking at the level in the gym. You got a high level in this gym. But what else did you get with these women that you play with every day? My best friends, my family. I mean, I've been at I've been at three different schools, right? But this group of women, the way we connect, the way we communicate, the way we care about each other, the staff, oh my gosh. They make 18 people feel so loved and cared for and they help us learn every single day. And I could not be more grateful for this opportunity for my last year. How did you guys weather the storm in the third set when it was set point a couple of times for Louisville? What was the conversation like? It was like, we're not playing the moment. We're not playing the crowd. We're playing one point at a time, and it's just our inner circle, just us together against the world. Hey, it worked out. You're a national champion. Thank you so much. <laughs> Zoe, congratulations on that national championship. It was so much fun to watch you play. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> national championship for Texas. And let's go over to Katie, who's standing by with Sage. Thanks, Courtney. Sage, congratulations. I absolutely love the look. You've got a Haku. Who gave it to you and how'd they find it? Um, one of my sisters, my super close friend from high school, she came out here from Texas. She drove all around Omaha to try and find these flowers and she did a great job. They look beautiful. I'm so happy that she could be here tonight. What do you think of the performance from you and your teammates? I think everybody did what we came here to do. We focused on one point at a time. We could feel it the whole time we were playing. We knew that we had to close and we did. And I'm so proud of everybody. I'm so happy. Like. I waited five years for this. I'm so happy we finally got it, and everybody on this team deserves it. When you left Utah, is this what you envisioned? This is exactly what I wanted out of my last year of college, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I chose to finish my career here. I mean, there's no other place. This team has become my second family, my home away from home. So I'm so happy that we came together. We earned this this whole season. So words can't describe how I feel right now. I'm so happy. Congratulations. Thank Enjoy. You. Thank you. Let's go, Sage. There's a lot of emotions, rightfully so. What a journey that Texas has been on. And Sage Kahaina Torres really credits a lot to assistant coach David Hunt, who really improved her confidence, the way she locates the ball, the way she sees defense. She's really grown as a setter. And that's what you want to do. You want to continue to get better because that's what makes it fun to be an athlete. A big piece to this Texas puzzle. They came from all over, 11 new players this season. They found a way to get it done. Texas, it is your national championship, their third national title. Confetti all over the place. Smiles on the faces of the Longhorns as the trophy is going home to Austin.
can't believe how fast it's gone. It's been already 10 years. And the block, after years of near misses, it's a hit for the horns and the 2012 National Championship. When I think back, there was so much growth throughout the year, but there was also so much joy on the journey that we had. And so it was really special. His 10-year national championship is a really special part of the legacy of this program. I remember being 12 and watching that match, and that match was literally the reason why I wanted to come here. So I'm definitely going to put in all I can to get him this natty. More so than wanting this for me, I really want this for him. And they got it for him. Him being Jared Elliott, Texas's head coach in his 22nd season. Since 2012, the national champions, we had two first-time champions in Kentucky and Wisconsin, and now Texas back up their name on that list. What has stood out to you, Katie, about this Texas run, and especially what they were able to do tonight in the championship match? I just thought that they were so dominant, almost suffocating. They never allowed Louisville to really get into a rhythm and play the way that Louisville likes to, blocking defensively. We didn't get to see the true Louisville volleyball team. That's a testament to just how physical Texas is. I agree. They were able to stay in system all mm -hmm. night, and they've got so many weapons. Louisville showed some life in that third set. Mm -hmm. I thought they had a chance, but Texas was too much. They answered. Yeah. It was impressive, and Texas is going to come out with a 3-0 sweep. Thank you for being with us tonight. It has been an honor to be here. Thank you for being a volleyball fan. Texas, the 2022 national champions, they come out and do it in a dominating performance on the biggest stage in this sport, a sweep of Louisville. That trophy is going home to Austin.